The story of welding is man's quest for new ways of utilizing the Earth's resources for his own betterment. It's probable that the principles of welding were discovered, lost and rediscovered repeatedly by ancient peoples the world over. For many years, ordinary fire was the principal source of heat for welding purposes. And now, the last vestiges, such as an occasional country blacksmith shop, are all that remain. The discovery of the electric arc led the way during the Industrial Revolution for more than a dozen major welding processes. When the gathering storm of World War I broke, it thrust unparalleled demands on industry for faster production, which brought instant recognition to the art of welding. After the war, new applications began to emerge. Welding techniques were introduced rapidly into the manufacture of machinery, building and bridge construction, and the booming oil patch. The evolution of high-pressure piping systems, cross-country or within a refinery, was accompanied by a parallel evolution of pipe materials and the means of connecting pipe joints. Thread and couple pipe led the way for mechanical coupling, and then oxyacetylene welding came into use followed by a major breakthrough, electric arc welding. Advances came in quick progression. With the development of the coated electrode, the shielded arc produced a superior fine grain weld, stronger and more dependable. One of the pioneers in pipeline welding is A.M. Hill who began his career as a welder on the first high-pressure, all-welded pipeline construction job. This career would span a period of rapid development in welding technology, during which Art Hill's research work and technical papers on hotline welding practices earned him the American Welding Society's highest award for advancement in industrial welding. In 1922, when I went to work for Prairie Pipeline Company, oxyacetylene ripple welding had just come on the pipeline scene. For the next 30 years, we saw almost continuous improvements in welding technology and equipment. The entire petroleum industry was expanding in all directions without dependable piping. No part of the industry could have developed the way it did. Maintenance welding on piping and service was made possible by the electric welding process. Art Hill and his associate Fred Zilm conducted an extensive testing program in 1955 to confirm their ideas about safe, dependable procedures for welding branch connections and reinforcing sleeves on high test pipe under various temperatures and pressures. Their conclusions were reported in an ASME paper and are still a part of the petroleum industry standards for maintenance welding on piping systems in service. Thanks to contributions made by Mr. Hill and others like him, the technology of welding continues to evolve. And as it moves from the state of art to that of science, the success of each weld becomes more predictable. A dependability that was the product of some 50 years of developmental work. We've had a look at the past. Now we'll examine the present state of welding from the standpoint of work on pressured line. The future we leave to your imagination. Chemical and petrochemical processing companies, products pipeline companies, oil refining and transmission companies all have an interest in the economy and safety of welding on pressurized pipe. Ever increasing demands for production have made it more difficult for plants and refineries to operate at reduced capacity. And often, a situation will arise that cannot wait for a scheduled turnaround. 
when a hotline pipe plugging operation, for example, could avert a costly shutdown or prevent product loss, welding the necessary fitting should not be a deterrent, providing the operation is feasible. We need to reevaluate our thinking about the feasibility of hotline welding. Since we cannot afford the economic penalty of a shutdown, since we cannot afford... Case Boshausen is a professional engineer with years of experience on pipelines all over the world, a refinery maintenance engineer, a participant in hotline studies conducted by several welding institutes. He is a code committee member and hot tapping expert. As we join him, Mr. Boshausen discusses the essential preparations and procedures to be observed in hotline welding in the plant environment for a scheduled turnaround. Yes? I think we all agree that welding a fitting is economically sound, but is this an equally sound practice from a technical standpoint? Even though welding on a flowing line to perform hot work is a common practice in plants worldwide, each hot tap fitting installation needs careful review. Weld procedures vary with the grade of steel pipe, product in the line, temperature, and pressure of the product and the atmospheric conditions. The real key to success in any hotline welding is this. Foremost, the welder should be qualified and provided with a hazard-free environment, stable and explosion proof. An ultrasonic inspection should be made to verify the wall thickness of the pipe and to confirm that the inside wall is essentially free from corrosion. The pipe should be no more than 1 8 inch out of round for normal welding conditions. The safety engineer must give his OK before any work, including welding, can commence. The pipe and fitting edges must be clean and moisture free. Moisture on either the pipe or in the electrodes can cause hydrogen embrittlement. Special care should be taken when welding is done on a pipeline carrying a product of a lower temperature than the outside atmosphere. Condensation can occur on the pipeline, causing weld cracks. This can be avoided by applying preheat to the pipeline. If the welding area is at all exposed to the outside environment, it should be shielded from the weather. Wind can carry sparks away and rain can affect the quality of the weld negatively. Hot tap fittings such as these need a suitable weld cap to prevent fusion of the longitudinal welds to the pipe. For best results, low hydrogen electrodes should be used. They help avoid delayed hydrogen induced cracking and are especially effective on pipelines operating at temperature below 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Nipple fittings require similar preparations and procedures. Fill the weld bevel completely, taking care not to weld on the inside of the fitting. A full penetration weld with moderate reinforcement is a good solution. Always test the finished weld, either by non-destructive testing, pressure testing or both. By applying recommended code and procedures, safe and successful welds are being performed daily on live lines. As a supervisor in Australia once told me, Sir, if I can weld on a pipeline, I can make any hot tap I like. And he did. <laughs> a member of the American Welding Society, Dave Hicks is a professional engineer, considered to be an authority on hot tap welding. Involved for many years in design and testing of hot tap fittings, Dave was a key figure in an extensive test program developed for one of the recently completed 48-inch diameter pipelines operating in severe low temperature. Here's an example of weld cracking. 
Well cracking can be caused by joint restraint or hydrogen pickup, an incorrectly formed bead, or a high carbon content or carbon equivalent of the base metals. This is an example of cracking in the heat affected zone. This normally results from the absorption of atomic hydrogen from the molten well metal into the heat affected zone. Rapid cooling traps this hydrogen in the crystal lattice and builds up pressure. This pressure, combined with shrinkage and any hardening effect of the steel's chemistry, causes cracking. Undercutting is the result of faulty electrode manipulation or the use of the incorrect size electrode. Improper current can also be blamed. To prevent these and other welding problems, such as porosity or lack of fusion, qualify the welders and weld procedures to the proper codes, use a low hydrogen process, carefully control the heat input, see that the carbon equivalents of the fitting and pipe material are low, ensure that the wells are made in the proper sequence. Longitudinal wells are done first and must allow a suitable well gap to prevent fusion of the fitting to the pipe. Next, a circumferential well is made on one end of the fitting, followed by a circumferential well on the other end. Avoid overfilling the end circumferential fillet wells. A fillet well size of about one and a half times the pipe wall thickness is considered sufficient. Blow through, a hazard to hardline welding, occurs when the weakened pipe material under the welding molten pool is blown out by the internal pipe pressure. Blow through can be prevented by observing a few basic rules. The content of the line should be flowing and only a shallow penetration, dry, low hydrogen rod should be used. The minimum allowable pipe wall thickness should be 0.156 inch or greater. The electrode should be manipulated to maintain a heat balance between the fitting and the pipe. The weld attaching the fitting to the pipe should be made circumferentially, not perpendicular to the hoop stress of the pipeline. Reduce pressure in accordance with ASME Gas Piping Standards Committee's recommended formula. Welding on pipe with unstable contents should be avoided. A mixture such as oxygen and fuel with a mixture in the combustible range should not be welded on. A weld can be made on the line if the fuel component of the mixture is increased to give a mix that is too rich and is not in the combustible range. Welding should not be done on oxygen, oxygen enriched air or compressed air lines if there is any possibility of a fuel being present. When a line contains ethylene or other unsaturated hydrocarbons, use low hydrogen electrodes. Use full encirclement fittings. Have a flowing line with a maximum pressure of 1100 PSI or lower and a maximum temperature of 250 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. Apply ASME gas piping committee codes or other standard codes. The ethylene or other unsaturated hydrocarbon should not contain over 1000 parts per million oxygen. No flow conditions can allow the contents of a pipe to reach higher temperature than with flow conditions. While flow conditions help to dissipate heat, they also speed up the quench rate, a factor in cracking problems. Follow these recommendations when dealing with unstable pipe content. Our process plants with essential piping systems can benefit from the technology and skills that others have long since found to save time and money.